go. Thought that I grace period overdue payment. But here's the problem with that. Their office closed March 24th. I can't make a payment. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to go uh, downtown to the main office Monday. Hopefully it's a legend that there's a whole lot of bandwidth I'm working with right now. Uh, I didn't dial back. It's still at 1080. So, uh, so we'll see. So first I'll give you an update. What's going on here in Candio. And then I'm going to uh, talk about my adventure this week went out a couple times and I did a you know a couple little video things but I'm going to explain some things that I, uh, were not in that video um, the good and the bad first of all here in Candio now remember Candio is like a state it's you know just this state that has these little towns and villages and Armenia is the capital of Candio. In all total in Candio there's what maybe half a million people. About 300,000 of them here in Armenia. So it's it's not huge. And it's mostly rural. It's mostly farm. Uh, you've seen all the villages and towns I've gone to. Well here they've this is where we stand as far as the numbers go. There's been 865 tests conducted. And it's problematic because just like in the U.S. in the beginning, all the tests must did have to go to Bogota. And because of that, there was at least a 10-day delay for the results. Very much like you saw in the U.S. Now, in the U.S., you've got all these corporations, they, they all jumped in and, you know, they're all competing to get out there with these tests. They're getting faster and faster. Now you got a spit test. you got one that does a finger prick in five minutes, you find out. So they've made great headway. Here, the most headway we've made is that some of the labs in neighboring departments or states have opened up testing. And so now the turnaround is about three days, but we don't have any drive-through 15-minute testing or anything like that. On the other hand, we don't have a huge problem here. Now, this is what we know and understand that people aren't getting tested, but they're only testing people that they suspect that are sick. And so those numbers are somewhat representative. And uh, I don't know why we lost the chat on the screen, but, uh, oh, good morning. Good morning from Ecuador. So, um, 865 total tests. There's a little over 200 results that they're still waiting for. Actual tests, a little over 600 here in Candio. Of those, 51 are positive, or have been positive. 20 people have recovered out of those 51. Two people died and the last one to die was well over a week ago. And the increasing uh, or the rate of increase doesn't seem to be there. We actually went several days with none and then uh, we got two positive tests. So over the course of four days we've had two people added uh, with two days going into the store some kind of official business but I will say I had to go out twice this week once on my official day and once uh, wasn't my official day was Friday uh, but I also went out on Wednesday and nobody's hassling anybody there is one street check that I'm aware of in Colombia because like many places politics is getting in the way I see in Ecuador it's kind of a mess there too, and in the U.S., it's 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 ridiculous politics. You know, I swear it's the evil of the world. And uh, here you've got the president, Duke, who wants to have a plan to reopen because of the hardship that it puts on so many people. And there was such a huge backlash. There was all kinds of things, and there was uh, people themselves were or supposedly, I mean, we only know what 
you know the opposition is telling us that and they're saying people are up in arms that they want to be quarantined that's hard to believe it's not it, I can tell you it's not the case here in Armenia uh, people are anxious to just you know get past this but he's been getting blasted for wanting to open the economy and so he's kind of backed up on on some things that he said lost signal uh, there's not much I can do about it so I'm just going to go ahead and continue with this and um, you know just hope for the best um, I'll hit record maybe I can you know post this up later so that's what's going on here in Candio and that's the you know the situation here in in Colombia now my walk I give you my thoughts on my walk I uh, I told you previously that I've been cooped up here for you know over a month and that I was taking it pretty well it was you know it's no big deal I'm used to you know being a bit of a hermit anyway so I'm back okay I'm sorry about that there's nothing I can do about it but I you know I've been I've been cooped up here but that was okay but I'll tell you going out and walking around that's what's become depressing it's it's not fun to be out there walking around and here's why I'm seeing places that are closed permanently closed for example there's a restaurant uh, next to the supermercado that I like to go so there's this restaurant near the supermercado that I like to go to and I've shown it I've actually done a couple videos in it and it's called cravings and it's closed and I thought well okay everything's closed except the signs gone I mean it's closed it's shut down it went out of business and I'm seeing quite a few of those things which it's understandable but it's sad because you know these are places that I like to go and they're gone I mean you know, something will spring up I mean that's how things go but you hate to see it over something like this it was a really good business it was always busy I think it was some sort of chain but um, you know here in Armenia there was only one so you know I'm seeing that and another thing that um, Another thing that I saw that was kind of depressing is I've expressed to you many times that while I'm a, a loner and things like this are fine for me, but I like that fix of the positivity. And one of the things I love about Armenia is going out and uh, just seeing the smiles and the joy and the friendliness that's out there. I mean, you, you just can't walk down the street without seeing it. Well you can't see it behind mask and everybody's wearing a mask and it's 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 unnerving now if I were in downtown Cuenca where you know a lot of people it's the nature of the society uh, and in Hiron it wasn't like that in Ecuador but in Cuenca the nature of the society is kind of keep to themselves and you'll see some people smile but for the most part they just kind of put their head down go about their business and so if they had a mask on it it's like you know nothing really different here but if I were in here own in Ecuador and I wasn't seeing you know people laughing and joking and like that it, it would be a different place and that's what I'm finding here in Armenia that with what's going on with these masks it, it's a different place now the upside of the mass I'll say this is people who have been to Colombia will understand this but women are very aware of how they look it's it's a big thing not as much as it was when I lived here back in 2002 uh, where there they wouldn't step out of the house without preparing for three hours here you still have that but not with everybody but with the mask it's funny because you see so many well the guys are going around they're basically black masks mine's green you see some green masks they're just basic but the women you're seeing these designs and you're seeing smiling faces on the mask you're seeing a 
fashion masks. And it's a big thing here because, you know, the m much of the masks here are made locally. You know, it's they're just making them in their back room and going out and selling a dozen of them. And so, so it, it's pretty fascinating. I was standing in line at the supermarket uh, Friday. And I look back, and I, I would have videotaped her, but a lot of people are, are weird about videotaping, so I didn't. But there's this girl standing there that was probably gorgeous, and she's got her midi shirt on, and you know, and she's thin, and and she's got this mask with this huge smile, and you know, it's like with lipstick on the mask, and it's like her personality is going to shine through and uh, but then you look at the guys and it's just you know mm, I'll, I'll do my business so that's you know that's the positive the po you know the positives are it seems like life is coming back even though the strict regulations are still technically there but you know the negatives are you're seeing place places closing up permanently and there's a there's a difference in the feel of course when you go out in the street and it's missing that thing that I love I will say that tons of restaurants are open for delivery so when you walk by restaurants you'll see people in there working and I watched this one it's called Cubano it's uh, Q Bano it's a chain it's it's like a subway it's like a Colombian subway and um, with, with flat uh, pressed sandwiches so I'm wondering if people are hearing me the chat stopped but we'll just keep on going so I, I'm standing in line and I'm in front of this place so I'm, I'm watching and you're seeing the motorcycles come and go for the home deliveries and when they go in right inside the door there's uh, some kind of alcohol spray and they're spraying things down and then there's a uh, hand gel and they're washing their hands up and and you could see that they were taking care preparing um, the food so whatever it is you have people taking it to heart they're not doing things because oh I got to they're doing things because um, they tend to do the right thing here so that, that was nice to see and and so a lot of places open doing that however um, they've got to be getting killed because you know I watched three or four orders come and go over the long period of time that line was over an hour long and I, I you know I saw there weren't a lot of orders but there's still payroll and you know costs so you know I, I I'm skeptical as if they even are getting their costs covered but uh, I don't know hopefully it's gone soon all right and uh, car I was asked about the car what's going on with the car I was supposed to uh, meet up with a guy here um, Friday and I canceled him coming and I canceled him coming because while I have enough for that car I until I get the rest of the money that I live on which hasn't arrived yet it's days late until I get that I'm not comfortable spending that money because I might need it for rent or some other things so uh, you know I've got to keep it at arm's length they're just not quite enough I, I can buy the car and I can I can live but I don't have enough for rent and a couple of their bills uh, for, for right now so I, I'm delaying on that car in the meantime I just keep looking for other options uh, that one's still there it's still available uh, I told him I said if you want to come by and I you know I can do the inspection on the car I know about cars it's a big part of my life 10 years old my first job working in a junkyard and through all of my life the business that I did was mostly related to the car business consulting things like that so very familiar with cars intimately familiar and um, so you know I plan on putting the car through its paces I know what to look for but he didn't want to do that he says well I'll wait till you have you know the actual money in hand no oh, okay 
but there's a little complication here there's a website it's called runt r-u-n-t uh, dot c-o as in columbia and uh, you can take a look at it it's very interesting because it tracks all the cars now the license plates stay with the car and so it's just like its own personal id tag and so anything that's occurred if there's tickets outstanding you can look it up in this database and it'll tell you if there's tickets outstanding if it's wanted for some crime like it, somebody used the car in the performance of some crime if it's a suspect it'll it'll show up in that uh if, if it ever had an accident anything that was recordable like when people went through insurance something like that uh, it's all in there and all you need is the VIN number or you can do it with the plate number and the owner's cedula so um, so I'm gonna run that you know to make sure that everything is cool because if you buy a car let's say it's got outstanding tickets the owner of the car is responsible so even if those tickets occurred prior to you buying the car you're buying those tickets along with the car so you want to make sure that's uh, cleared up that's about all I had for the week that's kind of what went on I'm, I know this is disjointed and you're probably not even be able to watch me but I will ask if there's any questions right now if there is go ahead and ask them and we'll see if we can get to it and I'm looking down at my stats and drop frame almost 7,000 dropped frames so yeah I can imagine it's coming and going for you all right well I'm guessing that you can't even see the stream at this point I will post this up as disjointed as it is sorry for that hopefully I have this fixed up for the next time around and um, with that we'll call it a day